All right, I just got through watching the Nick Trujillo interview with um, Hunter Labrada. I think Brian is his name. Um, I don't know who Brian is. I know, I mean, who, who doesn't know who Hunter is? Um, Nick Trujillo is one of my one of my friends. Um, and Nick did a good job, and it was actually it was really entertaining. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I've dealt with in the past with clients, with friends, and it's, it's the bodybuilding world. And, you know, there was so much tension there. And a lot of those times you're like, who's right, who's wrong? And here's a lot of the problems with, um, I'm gonna just talk about bodybuilding world because you, when you're prepping for a show, if you haven't prepped for a show ever at a top level, where it be national level, pro level, and got to, in, to the craziest condition of your life, big, big, big boys, big, full conditioned, um, you lose your mind, okay? First of all, even if you're doing it naturally, let's say my first two shows I did natural, with, even with no hormones, I was irritable, I was like wild, crazy. Um, it just, changes you your, your body's not supposed to look like that that is not humans aren't supposed to look like that like su that's superhuman and from the outside in the public you look superhuman but people would have no clue how you feel you feel terrible you're suffering you're emotional you're you're not thinking rational sometimes and then to throw in all these different hormones like especially like trimbalone and and all this other stuff and it could be a wreck and, you know, I'll talk about some of my experiences when I, you know, I still coach a lot of people. I coach a lot more normal people now than competitors just because of this kind of stuff. Um, people now have a really hard time staying loyal. Um, when I first started coaching people like 20 years ago, I started doing it just to my friends. This is when I first started being a coach. Um, just as a friend to help other friends and I was just learning and I was good at it. So my, my all my friends pushed me to do it like, hey, you need to be a coach. And it wasn't uh, like a big thing at that time. There, in the whole Dallas-Fort Worth area, there was probably four well-known coaches and I was eventually one of them. So people would start coming to me and start making a living and that was my living. That's been my living the last 20 years, my main source of income. Of course, I've taken breaks because you get really burnt out. Um, and things I noticed back then to now, when someone hired you as a coach, they put a, they, they literally put so much more trust in you. Um, now I see it just people just coach hop constantly. Like let's say a client would hire me. You have to figure out that client's body. Even though I did good with these, these five other people and we won, this new person, we have to figure out their body. And I've had clients like that where their bodies are just crazy and hard to get in shape. But you try, you go back to the drawing boards, you try and you keep trying until you get it perfected. Now everybody just wants to jump ship every time they don't look good, jump ship, jump ship, jump coach, jump coach. Like there's some secret formulation out there, okay? And then coaches get like top names. Like all these, like my motivation about 12 years ago was to be known as one of the best coaches in the world, bodybuilding coaches. I was, I had that, I've always had that competitive. And since my career ended early in bodybuilding, I got injuries, got two shoulder surgeries, I had to have surgery on those two years. Everybody like passed me up during that time. I did come back, but it just wasn't myself. And then I retired that year. So I had that still really hard competition in me and I would just, live through my clients, right? So most of the time, my clients, you know, we got along and I was a really tough coach. I mean, uh, I even had like, I used to make a lot of clients cry. So not like cry, some of the girls did cry, but uh, everybody knew Armand's hard. He will drop you, listen to him, but I got all winners, all winners. And let me tell you something. I didn't go approach people. I didn't say, hey, let me coach you. People came to me. And I didn't get the most genetically gift gifted people either because I didn't go chase people. I didn't say, hey, let me prep you for free. This was my living. I took it seriously. 
Um, so I had like basically all winners and basically all crazy transformations. Of course, there was a person here or there that just wasn't for them. But when social media came out, it people flooded to the bodybuilding scene and, you know, all the other classes, bikini, men's, men's physique, um, now classic physique, now wellness. It's just it's so many people and it it's 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 messy. You know, people just I'm gonna go talk to this coach, this coach, or this coach, and then all the bodybuilding gossip and then all the hormones we're taking. Um, it can get really messy. And you got big steroided up I was one of them guys that, you know, um, and when you're coaching somebody, some of my best friends I've made being their coach and it worked out. Others, we just weren't friends. And a lot of times they try to be your friend and it just, you didn't want to be the friend. Maybe for some reason, maybe you just see they didn't have a good character or wh whatever the reason may be. But you, I made a lot of my best friends through coaching and I remember one year, it was a hard year. It was the toughest year I ever probably dealt with. It was 2013, my mom got diagnosed with cancer, misdiagnosed, and it was stage one, and then I was actually stage four, and a couple of doctors messed up, and um, I, I took off that year. I, I was living in South uh, North Dallas. I still kept my apartment, but I moved back to Arlington to live with my parents um, and spend my mom's last days with her together. Um, they thought she had about six months then. She ended up lasting about a year, a year and three months. And all I did was want to spend much of time with, with her. I didn't care about making money. I was like, I don't care if I go broke. I can always make money back. And I still came to my apartment on the weekend and, and trained people out here because more money was out, here, out in the Dallas area than Arlington, better gyms too. So during that time, um, I had some people that were some of my best clients and some of the people were undefeated. We never even lost. Uh, they contacted me and they were like, Hey, we're going to go in a different direction. We know you got a lot on your plate. I'm like, okay, this is a time I need to stay busy and I need to keep my mind busy. And these people, it was, it was not, it wasn't cool. It wasn't okay. They should have came at me differently. And this is a time that I kind of like feeling, you know, talking about my feelings with getting into the coaching stuff and the friendship stuff. Cause I was kind of friends with these people too. And then they got jealous of other clients. They thought I was paying attention to other clients more and people with better genetics and this and this. So there's a lot of jealousy that goes through it. That's why, you know, I've met a lot of good friends and coaching them, but I've also met people that we were friends. Then we went like this because, you know, you might be maybe hard on them as a coach and they take it the wrong way that you're being, you know, a different way. So it's, it's hard to, for the public to understand unless you do it. And there's just so much drama. I, I mean, out of all the industries, my friends or other people in fitness and bodybuilding, there's so much drama constantly. I mean, just negative drama all the time. I mean, I got so burnt out eventually. I had to, I took three years off and I went and did OR repping for three years. I still had about probably five bodybuilding clients, but I had to take off and I took off three years. I like went to be a hermit. I didn't go to shows at all. I didn't watch bodybuilding. I didn't think about bodybuilding or anything. And I needed that just to, just to, figure things out. And then I fell in love with bodybuilding all over again. Um, and for myself, no, I, my career is done. I mean, people's like, Oh, you could come back. You could, you could do this. Listen, my body is a mess. Like my, like I still stay really big. I still stay like 270, and, and that's not on that. All that's on is just doctor prescription stuff. No, it's just not TRT. It's doctor prescription stuff. So stuff you can get from your doctor. And um, I have no desire to come back to compete. You know, the money's changed. There used to be money in it. There's not as much money in it now. Um, but I can see where, you know, these guys, they just got too far apart to but just become friends again. You know, he, he, he it seemed like um, Hunter was very violated when, you know, he got a hold of Fouad, like, I want to go on this podcast and do this. And, and then and then Brian got offended when he said something on the podcast and it was just too much happen. And when too much happens, just sometimes that friendship, it's just like a relationship, like with a, with a girlfriend, you just need to go. And, you know, 
like like now I've talked to several people three people on the Olympia level and about coaching them and after our conversations I'm not going to put their names out there of course that's that was between me and them we I couldn't feel like I could coach them successfully with their with their how they are they just don't have trust. They, I need someone to put all their trust in me. Because when I coach somebody, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. I want you to do this, 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 this. Of course, I, I take feedback from how they feel. But I'm a very hard coach. And that's why my clients have always gotten in the craziest condition. Um, could I have gone and taken on higher up clients? Yeah, I could have. But it just I'm not going to... A lot of these coaches made it through. They kind of kissed up to these bodybuilders and that's who I came from so I wouldn't do that um but congrats on Nick for this interview it was really entertaining I mean it was entertaining just to you know see that but you know friendships in I've had so many of those instances just like that end and I think Brian has has a little feelings you know a little more emotional than Hunter Hunter's kind of I gotta move on I gotta do this I'm you know he's a busy guy he's in the height of his career um, that's kind of how I was. It was just like, hey, this didn't work out. And I'm pretty forgiving too. I can be like really, really, you know, aggressive and kind of sometimes. But several friends, I have forgave a lot. Client types of friends. And they've done some crazy shit. I mean, I've had clients, friends, like, lie to me about, you know, they're dying of cancer. Just lies. Just crazy stuff. But, you know... That's the hard thing is, and the hard thing I've had this past year since I've really got back into coaching again and all that, do I want to take this client on that I'm cool, we're cool and we're friendly with you, with each other, or do I just want to not? Because if I do, we can potentially end up like that because I'm going to be pissed if I put my time, because when you prep somebody, you put your time, you put your emotions into that person that person's emotions are like affect you and your life because you're there. You're not just their coach. Like, Hey, here's a piece of paper. You're there for like, Hey, Armand, I'm crying. I don't know what to do. I don't feel right to this, or I'm having trouble with this girlfriend. I mean, you're like their life coach too. So you put so much into somebody and then you get, and you just don't, the return is just like, a oh, thank you goes a long way. Um, I'm not going to rename names again, but in the past, Ronnie Colmey sent some people and, I turned them pro and they just did, they were, they didn't even mention my name like in the interview because it used to be a big deal when like RX or MD would interview somebody, hey, who would you like to thank? And they didn't even name me as their coach. And I just wasn't their coach. I literally held their hand during the prep. And after all these times, I was just like, oh, that's not even worth it. Those couple thousand dollars for that prep, I can go make on normal clients and be happy. I got enough stress with my kids. And so um, I totally get it. But it, it was it's fun to have that those clients go win shows and especially you know get to that higher level um like when i was having clients like at nationals and get their pro card I, it, it made me happy and it was like okay we did this and i've had a, so many clients in the past they would win or get their pro cards and they would just quit whether it be money um relationships or whatever but this is just a wild sport wild industry uh with a lot of different characters, a lot of different hormones. And when it's, once you throw all those hormones and the dieting and all together, I'm right, you're right, it, it gets messy, right? And so um, I just wanted to comment on this video. Like it was good, Nick did a really good job and it was entertaining. I've done it myself. I've opened my, I've, I've said stuff about people that I really care and love about before too. And I'm like, I shouldn't have said that. And the best that you can do is, is apologize. Be a man and man up and say, hey dude, I'm sorry, I should have never said this and leave it at that. And y'all move on with your relationship. And if you choose to forgive each other, that's fine. But if it repeats and repeats, I usually I use the three, 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 three mark, uh, three strikes in your out mark. If someone does something like that over a friendship like three different times, it's like, okay, it's time to move different ways. Like I'm talking about betrayal. Like you betrayed me, you went behind my back and told somebody this or this. That stuff you don't do. If you really love and cherish a friendship, you hold that tight and guys are supposed to be like guys we're bros no girls matter no matter what we're friends and no girls gonna come between us and that's kind of how this was so this is normal guys but in the fitness industry it's a lot more drama and so much drama goes on and 
sometimes it's fun to be in it and sometimes it's miserable to be in it. And so I just wanted to comment on the interview and kind of give my perspective of my experiences with the whole, you know, industry and still, and it's still going on. I'm still, you know, a full-time coach, but, um, good job, Nick, doing the interview. Um, that was entertaining and hope these guys can go their own pathways and be successful. And, um, and, uh, uh LeBron and he, he, he still hasn't come in into shape yet. He needs to, you know, get it together with whatever coach he has, Ben Chow, whatever. I don't really know if that guy's even coached that many people to actually get him in shape, but hey, it's his friend or it's whatever. He trusts him. That's all that matters. Um, they can do it together. Um, but, you know, I've had clients. I had a client. Let me, I'll do one thing real quick. I had a client for eight years. Um, I took him from nothing to winning shows, winning, 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 winning. Got to a certain level, tried to turn his pro, and he just he just wasn't good enough. Um, his genetics were all maxed out. And I told him, you're not going to get any better than this. And he goes, well, I have to compete. I want to still compete. I said, okay. And, you know, I urged him, hey, at least take an off season. And he said, okay. And the next thing you know, he's competing. And people are like, Armand, what happened? What, what happened in so-and-so? He looks so terrible. I'm like, I'm not prepping him. I'm like, is he getting ready for a show? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I guess our friendship didn't matter because I thought we were friends too. Um, and, you know, they stayed at my house. I've mean, even cooked some of their meals for them when they were too tired on their diet. So, uh, like, when that ended and they didn't have a decency to even tell me, hey, I'm hiring another coach. And then it, once they hired that coach, and there was, it's a good coach they hired too, but the person's body is hard to figure out. Their body went just completely tanked. Um, I mean, looked terrible after they left me. And everybody was just like, what happened? I was like, I'm not their coach anymore. That's not my work. I mean, went from winning an overall show looking amazing, beating some good competitors, just looking just terrible. So um, I get it. It happens a lot. I'm more to ramble on. I've already done 15 or so minutes. Just again, congrats to Nick. And this stuff happens all the time, guys. This is normal, unfortunately. But my suggestion to people are, if you hire a coach, put all your trust in that coach and at least give them like two years, at least two years to figure your body out. And if you feel like that's not the right person for you, then move on. But before you hire that coach, make sure financial stuff is all set out. So you're not owing them or they feel like it was free prep or whether you're they're your friend or whatever. You know, like I'm prepping one of my best friends right now we grew up with. Um, he's a professional. Um, he, he's been with every top name coach there is. Aceto, Farah, Dennis James, Hani. And he had a long streak where he didn't place at all in any show. And I talked to him and I said, let me get you back on route. And I didn't want to coach him for a while just because I didn't want to ruin our friendship because he's one of my best friends. And we got back together a couple years ago and he moved 16th place is last place. So 16th and beyond is last. So he went from 16th with um, some top coaches. His last coach was uh, is coaching uh, top three. At the, he coached a guy that just got third at Olympia. Um, and we brought him to ninth and then to eighth. And this is past year, we brought him even higher. And he is masters now, he just won a second at a masters pro show. Um, but we we just jive well together. We don't have that clashing where we're arguing, we're just, we just he puts his trust in me, he knows what I'm doing, he's seen my work over the year, so it works. But a lot of times, guys, you just have to put your trust in somebody. And if you don't do that, do not hire that person because it's not gonna work out if you don't trust them, if you're second guessing everything they say. So that's the main problem I see today, just the coach and the client, the client's not trusting the coach, and the coach is like worried, I don't know what to do, are they listening to this person, are they listening to what I was saying, because that's that's a problem now. I used to, I didn't have to worry about any of my clients not, not listening to me, they respected me so much, they would listen to everything I say. Now I have people calling me, hey, I'm three weeks out from this show, I'm with this coach, uh, some of the top coaches in the world. Uh, what do you think about this? I'm like, listen, I'm not getting into y'all's mess. That's your coach. Finish it out. If you want to talk about hiring me afterwards, we can do that. So many people have come to me a few weeks out from shows, not feeling good about their coach, wanting me to dial them in. I'm like, no, I'm not getting into y'all's mess. And I try to stay away from all that drama. All right, guys, peace out.